tonight, live from the New Spire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas. We present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen. Also featuring Leah Bowser and Jeremy Martin. Music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest from Volunteers in Medicine, Alex Goya. From Smash Art Studio, Ashley Swartz. Music by Hey Red. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's still waiting for his life, his beautiful tickets, Mr. Jeremy Martin. Oh, yeah! Woo! Yes, looking good, crowd. Good. DJ Lenny, nice. Everyone give it up for DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Let's see if we one more time. Oh, man, what a good-looking crowd. Who's going to Life is Beautiful this week? Right on, right on. All right, so most of you are right where I am, completely ticketless. <laughs> Everybody was taking pictures of their armband, you know, their, their wristband entry in front of the downtown. And, uh, so I, I took a picture of my bare wrist. So I'll be on the outskirts cheering you guys on, having festival fun. Well, you guys are a great-looking crowd now. You guys, uh, you guys ready to get the show started? Yeah. All right, yes. Well, this is what's going on in the world around us. The philanthropic initiative founded by Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan will spend $3 billion over the next decade in an effort to cure and manage all human diseases. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's exciting. This is very exciting news, mainly because we can uh, give up doing all those walks and runs, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm going to sit at home on the couch and be like, the Zuckerberg's got it covered. Uh, yeah. Yahoo is expected to announce a massive data breach that has affected hundreds of millions of users. In personal news, I'll now be blaming this data breach for my 0-2 start in Yahoo's Fantasy Football League. So, <laughs> Save face a little bit there. A recent headline reads, the WNBA players should be applauded for their stand on social issues. Yeah. Not, not, not their ability to play basketball, mind you, just their stand on social just, issues. Just their stand, I see. <laughs> really? Come on, guys. No one watches the WNBA. Most of you didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, it appears that Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are headed towards divorce. Have we heard this? Have we seen this news? Yeah. Yeah. While this is sad for everyone, the news has really upset kids in the Syrian refugee community uh, who were hoping to be adopted by Brangelina. They're like... Trump and Hillary have both been preparing for the upcoming presidential debates. Trump said he's been preparing by uh, delivering more scripted speeches and instead of just saying whatever the hell pops into his head. And uh, Hillary says her preparation mostly happens by getting rid of all evidence of anything ever that has ever happened anywhere. <laughs> she, she's got a lot of... Clear yeah, it out. Just clear it all out. Yeah, clear out the, the, all the skeletons in the closet. Uh, <laughs> modern technology has actually unlocked the secrets of a damaged biblical scroll. Yeah, this new technology digitally allows them to unroll the scroll, and uh, they can identify the text written within. It is said to be an exact match to other preserved ancient texts of the Old Testament book of Leviticus, they think. <laughs> no one's ever actually read Leviticus. So they're, they think that's what it is. They're not 100% sure, though. Some underground church. There's like one guy that's like, I read Leviticus the other day. No, you didn't. The MacArthur Foundation has announced its 2016 Genius Grant winners. Yeah, once again, I've been left off the list. So. Yeah, but I'm still holding out for uh, people's sexiest man alive. That's, yeah. yeah. Right? I don't even know who does that. Like, where do I send my entry in? It'd be great if it came with uh, two Life is Beautiful tickets, right? I know, right? Yes. <laughs> Law enforcement in Australia is warning of malware-infected USB sticks being placed in mailboxes. They are telling people 
not to plug strange USB sticks into their computers. Also, if you receive mail from a Nigerian prince, don't open it, respond, and give them your social security number, right? <laughs> yeah. Old school mailbox crimes going on in Australia. Hey, we got a wonderful show tonight. You guys are a great looking audience. Let's hear it for DJ Lenny Love, Alfonso. <laughs> the go with no time to prepare fresh delicious meals? You've been meaning to meal prep, haven't you? Well, let Pollock Meal Prep do the cooking for you. Pollock Meal Prep is the newest Las Vegas-based meal prep service. No matter what your busy is, and I know we get busy, Pollock has you covered. We prep for those who work out, busy moms who want to eat better in their families, and people who just want better ingredients in their bodies. After all, you are what you eat. So what's your busy? Please visit us at www.potluckmealprep.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see what's cooking today. I created Potluck to help people be able to sit back and live. I strive to create fresh, delicious meals that you can enjoy on the go, in the office or at home, but always at your convenience. And as always, my meals offer healthier alternatives to pork and beef, so every meal for me is eating for a better life. So what's your busy? Log on to www.potluckmealprep.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see what's cooking today. Hello, everyone. I am super excited to introduce a wonderful artist, a new young millennial artist. Um, please welcome Ashley Schwartz. Hi, Ashley. Hey, you work at the beat. You work I out do, of the beat. Yeah, the emergency arts upstairs. Emergency arts, but you yeah. have to distinguish because unfortunately, because the beat is closing, unfortunately, on Sunday. You, yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I hate to like dive in these depressing no, topics it's okay. like super Sorry. early, but <laughs> how does it? What? What is that like? Well, you know, the beat brought in a lot of my customers and friends, and it's kind of confusing. Like, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but. Everyone that's still s staying there is really talented, and we're committed to continuing the community there. So I think I think it's going to be okay. We're going to have yeah. some shows. We're going to have some awesome stuff up there, and Good, it's going to live on. I love the art that goes on there, like the yeah. small, yeah, like <laughs> thanks the guys. Small spaces. Come fest. visit us. Were you part of the small spaces? I was, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I have a friend that fell in love with you. I think through the <laughs> small spaces. Fest. That's really cool. She's actually like secretly obsessed with you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are Blender you going to do to sell your art? Because I have someone. Just make it, really. <laughs> That's all, actually. Yeah. So how did you start off as an artist? What does that entail? Um, you know, when I was a kid, I loved drawing and painting. And I never thought, like, oh, I could have a career at this. I just, I was, it was just something for fun. And then I went to college, and I was like, oh, art's, art's a, that's an option. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I have a BFA. And I guess, yeah, that's it. I just. As one day I realized art could be a career, and I was really excited. Yeah, and then you went to the B, you bought a studio. Yeah, I have a studio there. I used to be on the first floor, and it was great. I love the vibes there. I love everybody that comes in there. We have some artists in the audience from the B, so. Oh, really? Yeah. And a par part of it is just knowing you're working with people who are so talented and you're not, you know, they always say you don't want to be the smartest person in the room, yeah. and I'm definitely not there. Good. And that's I'm glad. I feel, <laughs> that's I feel really so super great. superior, so you should just feel really good. <laughs> I didn't say you're very smart. <laughs> I'm I feel just very kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's awesome. So, what is your what's your style? Like, what do you bring? To um, art? I really so my my biggest influences are probably Roy Lichtenstein, who was the first artist to take kind of the if you can remember like the comic books of the '50s, like yeah. beautiful romantic imagery. It was the first time it was used in a fine art sense. So he was the first person to make good money selling this type of art. And he, yeah. he made these paintings, and now they hang in all these amazing museums. And also, let Andy Warhol, he, made, he was the first guy to paint pop culture and make it more than just doodles or something. It was suddenly, yeah. suddenly something you could, you you could make fine art about a celebrity. And that wasn't something that happened before. It was, it was portraits of dignified people or landscapes or something like that. So yeah. I love that freedom to say, like, 
I'm going to paint <laughs> whatever I want, you know? Yeah. Like, if I see this on the TV every day and I want to make a painting out of it, then I can, you know? Yeah, so, it's super so awesome. So I kind of, so I have a few things here. So I love the super graphic style. So <laughs> we have David Bowie here. Yeah, those are amazing. <laughs> and we're actually, the, we're, we're going to play a little game. You are actually giving away these. Yeah, these three prints right these here. These three prints. And we're going to play a little game. So the game, <laughs> the are they game is super easy. Uh, the game is for you guys, it's hard for us. It's hard for us. <laughs> The game is that you're going to start interviewing me. Exactly. And then when you ask me a question, you're yeah. going to guess my answer before I mm -hmm. say it. And I'm going to be really very honest. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. Like, I'm not going to lie. But if she gets it, it's more likely that she'll get it wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Ask her. Oh, I think. Let's see. What was your first pet's name? Spot. No, it was actually Lucky. <laughs> Let's see. Let's cheer. Like, yeah, how do, how do we give it out? We'll give it to a Next question. Um, what is your social security number? 422591723. This is awkward. That's not right. But I don't know if I want to say it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think. Are we, like, really recording? <laughs> All right, one more question. Let's see. What's your favorite color? All right, what do you think? <laughs> Blue. No, it's not. <laughs> I enjoy a nice red wine. Like a red <laughs> well, I think we failed again, so one one more. The uh, outside there, she's giving out these amazing postcards. Thank you. They're super oh, cool. You can on. send them to everyone you know. I know you have relatives elsewhere. Yeah, send them to people. That'd be so cool. They're amazing. And send me pictures of them. That'd be thank great. Thank you, Ashley, so much yeah. for being here. And thank you guys for being here. So up next, we have Alex Goya of Volunteers in Medicine of Southern Nevada. Woo! All right, so before we talk to our next guest, I wanted to take a special moment to talk about the Volunteers in Medicine of Southern Nevada. They are a clinic that anybody can go to. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better sponsor. It's a place that is privately funded, and it provides the safety net below the safety net. For people who don't have uh, even the ability to get on Medicare and some of those kind of services and end up in a situation where they, they need some health services, they're here in downtown Las Vegas for us. So the very first episode of the Downtown Podcast was founded on the concept of ROC, a return on community. And I don't think there's anybody who aligns with our vision more than the volunteers in medicine of Southern Nevada. So we'd like to play you a quick clip to show you exactly what they do. The sad reality is more than 400,000 people in Southern Nevada are still living without medical insurance. Can you explain VMSN and, and the service that you offer here? Absolutely. VMSN, Volunteers in Medicine of Southern Nevada, is a nonprofit free clinic. We take care of patients who have no insurance, who don't qualify for the expanded Medicaid and who can't afford their own insurance. Yeah. Um, we're a clinic that operates mainly with volunteers. Mm -hmm. We get no federal funding. We're um, funded by grants and by generous donations in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and we help thousands of people that really need help with free services, free medicine, free tests. Because that's a really incredible thing. Yeah. It really is, yeah, and, and, and for Sherry and everybody else uh, over there, we're really, really thankful, and we're excited to start the first of a four-part series where we're going to learn a little bit about how that nonprofit has helped our downtown Las Vegas. <laughs> nice. All right, so here to tell his story of being somebody in Las Vegas who didn't have health insurance and found himself in a uh, hard to deal with situation is Alex Goya. Please put your hands together for Alex Goya. Come on out. Hi. Welcome. Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're still in one piece. Okay, gotcha. 
All right, have a seat, Alex. Alex, uh, the way I understand it, and I'd like to hear more about your story, yeah. is that you found yourself with an illness and didn't have any type of insurance. Um, in Las Vegas, we know that it's not one of the best healthcare systems in, out of all the states, so what happened to you? Well, um, it kind of originally started, I used to donate a lot of uh, blood to the United Blood Bank, and I kind of just kept getting rejected because they told me I had, I had low iron, and so... Oh, man. I kind of, well, I mean... They're like trying to give your it's, blood, and they're yeah, like, nah, yeah. you can do better. <laughs> I, I, I Homeless thought guy, it, I thought come it, on in. I thought it was really Here's good five blood, bucks. but they, <laughs> anyway, so it, it kind of started with that. And, you know, like, low iron is not very common in men, so it was a little bit weird, but, like, not too concerning. But I kind of, my health really kind of gradually started to just run down, and I felt very run down. And eventually, uh, my dad and I, we were, we were hiking in Utah. We were hiking down this kind of slot canyon. And we hiked most of the day. And we turned around. We started hiking back up. And I kind of slowed down a little. And then I slowed down a lot. And then I was like, I don't think I can walk farther. Oh, man. And, you know, I'm a young, healthy, 23-year-old guy who hiked a yeah, lot. Yeah, I mean, you look, you look great. Yeah. Well, I, I look better yeah, now than yeah. I did yeah. You definitely look like you could hike. Well, I, I can I can hike, I can hike now. But um, I mean, anyways, that's that's how I knew I was I was really sick. And then, as as it turned out, I had no insurance at the time, and so I put down our jackets shoulder. and we slept in the watch. Oh, whoa, really? Well, I mean, that was that was sort of the option at the time because I I could I could barely move and. No He's more. like, yeah, I'm tired too. Good thinking. <laughs> Throw it down, yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay, so then the next morning, you found yourself with enough energy to make it home. Well, we we made it back. He carried most of pretty Stuff much everything, and uh, we made we made it back out. We we're planning on staying another another night, but we just we left yeah, uh -huh. because I wasn't I wasn't feeling too Makes good. Makes sense, but right? Yeah, and so I I knew I was sick, and I didn't have insurance at the time, and so we ended up getting hooked up with this organization, Volunteers in Medicine who had this fantastic doctor there, Dr. Cully, who really just sort of took care of me. And I, I mean, I didn't, I'd never been very ill before. And I didn't really know what to do. And I didn't really, I guess I didn't really respect how sick I was at the time. And she's the one that really kind of sat down and said, this is something that, that's, that's important you have to take seriously. And you're very ill and you need, you need help and we're gonna help you. And they did. And they got me. They got me a, a biopsy. They got me a diagnosis on my Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, so nice. she got she got a, she got a surgeon that volunteered his time for that. So they they had someone donate the money for for the the outpatient procedure itself. They had the, the surgeon self donated his services, and they kind of just took er care of everything. They they hooked me up with um, with 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 doctors and with chemotherapy and with radiation. And oh, man, I'm, I'm yeah. still here today because of what they did. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good that. Um, I kind of caught on to like when you said that like maybe you didn't like respect how sick you were. I know I I think a lot of people can identify with that. You you certainly don't get sick every day, so you start feeling maybe a little bit invincible, or it can be common to not you know just think that that's going to happen to you. Um, Talk to me about how your mindset was before you got sick and then after, and what is it that everybody should learn? Well, I think the important takeaway is that you think you're healthy, but you really, it's, it's not something that you can control. Anybody can be fine, and then you break your leg, you break your back, you break your hip, you get, you get cancer, you get some other disease, and just because you take care of yourself doesn't mean that, like, these things don't just kind of happen and no one can prevent it. And that kind of is the value of, of getting insurance. If you can at all get insurance, you should. So you don't have to. <laughs> well, you got them applauding for insurance? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, she should host the show, man, if you can get them applauding for insurance. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, so, so final thoughts on it. Like, uh, you know, after the big takeaway, like where, I mean, how do you think about your health care now? And um, especially, like, what, what would you tell somebody, all of us who live in Las Vegas? Well, I mean, get, get health care if you can at all. And if you are in a very good position, you should donate to this organization. That's a fantastic organization that kind of 
that's keeping a lot of people going that have nowhere else to turn to, you can, you can turn to them. And that's, that's what they're here for. That's what they want. And they, they, they saved my life. And I'm incredibly grateful to what they were able to do Aww. for me. And, and these are some, some beautiful people in but yeah, vol- I mean, they're volunteer doctors. I mean, these are doctors yeah. that can make a lot of money that right are spending on. their time. So I just, I think it's a great cause. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. So enough of the serious stuff. Um, okay. Alex, you seem like someone who wouldn't come up here and lie about his cancer. Is that true? No, not to my friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, think about what you meant by that. But <laughs> I asked you beforehand to give me three things that may or may not have happened to you. So you brought these envelopes, correct? Yes, absolutely. And you have filled them out. So I, I have not seen what's inside any of these envelopes, but uh, supposedly inside each one is something that may or may not have happened to you. And would you like to play a game of fact or fiction with me? I would love to do nothing more. <laughs> lies, 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 yeah. Fact the first, Alex once drove across the country and back in a van that he owned and had no money while he did it. And he looks like someone who could drive, but a van is really for a kind of an older demographic. I'm very distinguished. You're very distinguished. Fact or fiction the second, Alex once led a group of lost hikers through a snow-covered mountain pass in Utah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This one's feeling pretty true. I mean, you were in Utah when you got so tired you couldn't walk home. It's true. Your dad and you just slept right there on the ground. That one's seeming pretty true, but the van was kind of a dead ringer. Audience, what do you guys think? Do you think it's a true or a fact? (laughs) Fact or fiction the third. Um, Alex hitchhiked across Europe and lived with a French actress in the south of France. <laughs> French actress, oh man. Okay, so can I hear a little bit of your French? Can you say volunteers in medicine of Southern Nevada, El Francais? Volunteers in medicine of Southern Nevada. Man, that'd be such a, g- I'm so jealous if that's true. Especially if it was in a. <laughs> All right, I think these two are true. I think this one's your lie. I am going to call you out on lying about hitchhiking across Europe and living with a French actress in the south of France. It sounds like a movie. I think it's a lie. Do I win? You do win. Yes. Congratulations. Do it. Man, you know, I thought maybe, I thought maybe that was going to be the real one because it's crazy. But Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. We thank appreciate you, it. Give it up for Alex. Thank you. Usually they stay on the couch for another minute or two, but, you know, sometimes you have to go. (laughs) So for you audience at home, stay tuned, because we're going to be right back with a rooftop performance from Hey Red.
Once again, let's give it up for Hey Red. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew and to all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m. right here at the Inspire yeah. Theater. Party with us for the after party on the rooftop. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Peace. Love. Be kind to one another. Yeah.